Hi, I am Dr. Shweta Shah, a gynecologist, a laparoscopic surgeon, founder and director of Ameva Clinic Mumbai. In today's video, we are going to know what tests are required on the part of your female partner when you are considering planning for pregnancy. Whenever any couple has been trying for pregnancy for a period of one year and they are unable to conceive is the right time they should seek treatment with the gynecologist or the fertility expert. The moment you see a gynecologist, she will prescribe you three types of tests. Number one, tests which are related to the egg for the female partner. Test related to the sperms for the male partner and third are the test related to the anatomy of the female reproductive test. I am going to walk through each of these tests one by one. First are the tests related to the eggs. Three types of blood tests are done. FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, serum estradiol and AMH or anti-mullerian hormone. Now the FSH or the follicle stimulating hormone is released from the pituitary gland in the brain. The function of this hormone is to stimulate your ovaries to produce a number of immature eggs for that cycle. Both the blood tests, the FSH and the estradiol should ideally be done on day 2 or latest on day 3 of your period because at that time your hormones are at the baseline. The normal FSH value is anywhere less than 10 when you are considering fertility treatments. If your FSH value is higher than 10, just for example, if it is 20, it indicates that your ovaries are requiring more amount of fuel in the form of FSH to produce X number of eggs for that cycle. Second is the serum estradiol levels. The normal serum estradiol level is less than 80. Now the FSH and the serum estradiol levels are very closely interrelated and therefore to interpret them as normal or reassuring both of these test results should be available. Just for an example, if your serum estradiol level is very high, it will invariably result into a falsely low FSH value and therefore both of these tests should always be run together in the female partner. The third test is the serum AMH or the anti-mullerian hormone levels. Now this is not produced by the egg itself but it is produced by a group of supporting cells around the egg which are known as the granulosa cells. Now the AMH value always is an indicator of the quality, the quantity and the outcome of any kind of fertility treatment. The AMH levels are usually a rough indicator about the quality and the quantity of the eggs. Not only this, but it helps your doctor to understand what will be the outcome for a particular fertility treatment in that couple. The AMH levels can be done anytime during your periods but for all practical purposes they are done on day 2 of periods when other hormonal tests as we discussed are being done. After these three blood tests we do one more test which is the pelvic ultrasound done via the vaginal approach. Now this is also done on day 2 or day 3 of periods because it will give us an idea of the number of eggs that are present as a baseline in either of the ovary. This is medically known as the antral follicle count. This antral follicle count is correlated with the patient's age, the FSH value and the AMH value. Depending on these numbers, a fertility plan is chalked out for the couple. This is only a rough estimate that your doctor will get 
before starting any kind of fertility treatment. I have seen patients in my day-to-day -day practice where the woman has an absolutely low AMH but she has conceived naturally. Also, I have seen cases where the AMH is very high and the couple is unable to conceive naturally. Then we talk about the test regarding the sperms. I have already made a video on my YouTube channel regarding the semen analysis. You can go and see that video for further information. Then comes the test for the anatomy of the female reproductive tract. Now by this we get information on the uterus, the lining of the uterus where the pregnancy is actually going to stay, the ovarian relation with the fallopian tube and the uterus and the information on the cervix and vagina. Again in this pelvic ultrasound we do not get any information on the fallopian tubes. Now the fallopian tubes should always be open when you are considering planning for pregnancy and to test the patency of the fallopian tubes we have three different kind of tests. I already have a video on my YouTube channel describing the test for checking of the fallopian tubes. Kindly go through that video for further such information. Thank you. For further such updates on women health, kindly subscribe to my channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Bye till I see you next.